Dave, good afternoon. What would you like to say? Good afternoon, Peter. Um, it's not the not the first time the cenotaph and veterans have been the focal point of of, of trouble. Um, there's a precedent for this before when BLM burnt the flag, and there was an attempt to draw veterans out in a deliberately provocative um, act. Yeah, which was um, disgraceful, I, by the way. It was disgraceful. But I think what Suella is talking about with the double standards is entirely correct. Now, my worry now is, is where we are is that the government have pussyfooted around with this. And I'm pretty convinced, if I'm reading the runes correctly, from within senior officers and sources I've got within government, that we may well wake up Monday morning in a very different country if the government is bounced Sunday morning, if there's civil unrest Saturday evening, i.e. that the protesters do not go home and they camp out and it carries on Sunday morning. And I think that's what's being alluded to here by Suella is that Monday morning we will wake up in a very different country when and if the government cancels that National Armistice Day parade. Goodness me, well, that is a pretty terrifying thought. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure no one hopes that happens. Do you, do you think the government has been pretty weak on this? I mean, I, I do, actually. I think they're passing the buck even before yeah. things have happened. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, yeah I, I entirely agree. They are, um, and they've pussyfooted around. Now, this, is, this, this problem started quite some time ago, and... Um, when the BLM uh, had set fire to the flag, we got, at the same time, the then permanent secretary within the MOD, Sir Stephen Lovegrove, was endorsing BLM. Well, within... your, your police officers taking the knee. Well, yes, that was at the same time. So it was seen as an open goal. Yeah. Now, so I'm basing that. And now, he then became national security advisor. So mm. let's, let's let that sink in, shall we? Mm. Right. So we then saw the government wanted to cancel the National Armistice Day Parade during COVID and myself and an ex-SAS veteran called Rusty Furman stepped in and said, this is a nonsense, you cannot do that. You can conduct an open order parade and subsequently that's actually what the government U-turned and did that. Okay. So what we've got here is a woeful mix of acumen and experience. They should never have allowed this to even been considered. It was deliberately disrespectful, provocative. It should never have been a starter, but now it's been allowed to run. We've now got this mix coming in where veterans again will be used as a vector. And there is, you know, we're going to see a situation here where we've got both end, both flanks being controlled from one point. So you've got the left at one end and what appears to be right, but it isn't, up the other with... Um, the, the the football faction shall we say i'm going to choose my words carefully there where the potential for problems here is absolutely it would be common sense to anybody with the in government to literally know this is not going to be taking place and we're not going to put ourselves in this position because it's the day it's the weekend that we do you know we have a national uh, day of remembrance yeah. award it, and it could not have got any more obvious and provocative than what it is but of course nobody's pulled it up Where's Matthew Rycroft, the Permanent Secretary at the Home Office? Where's Sir Tim Barrow, the National Security Advisor? We've, you know, heard, we've heard very little from them. We've heard very little from... Exactly. Well, well, you know, people need to understand that Suella isn't fully in charge. Mm. A lot of the load, is, the majority yep. of the load, yep. is capped by Rycroft. Dave, I've got to take another call, but I really appreciate what you're saying there. I think I think a lot of it makes a lot of sense. Jane says, hi, Peter, I agree with everything Suella has said because she says what a lot of people are thinking. The matter of bias, and as for Sadiq Khan, he just wants to blame anyone except himself for what, what might just happen. Jane, I totally agree with you. Sadiq Khan has an opinion on everything apart from what he's responsible for. Jane continues, also that group you mentioned said yesterday they were going to the Cenotaph, so uh, well before Suella's piece in The Times. Love your show, says Jane. Thank you. Roy in Plymouth says, if there are any problems at the weekend, I would almost guarantee some common commentators will say the protesters who are so peaceful are innocent, but will blame the far right, using the term far right, to try to justify their argument. Let's talk to Jackie in Manchester. She's giving me a call, 0344 499 1000. Jackie, you're on the air. Good afternoon. Hi, Peter. Um, I think we're getting to a tipping point. Um, I think that uh, basically what is going on with Suella is, for the Tory party, a, a fight for the soul. Of, of the party and I think that over the years the British public have been silenced we've been censored we've been labelled whether it was for Brexit whether it was over uh, immigration and time and time again we've been let down and I think that Parliament needs to realise the sense of frustration 
an anger and despair that is out there with the public. Does Fiona Braverman speak for you, Jackie? Yes, she does. She does. And I think on a few things she she speaks for me because she she has the courage and the conviction to say what she believes. And unfortunately, if Rishi Sunak sacks her, that will be the nail in the coffin for the Conservative Party because the Conservative voters have been crying out from a proper right of centre party and we've not had it for years. We've been promised so much, delivered nothing and people are getting absolutely fed up um, at the spin and nonsense that we're being given week in, week out. And I think okay. if Richie Sunak does sack her, it also shows that he's weak, that he's caving in. But surely it's weaker to have someone who is your home secretary, Jackie, and you say, you can't do this, you can't publish this article, make these changes that I've told you to make to this draft. She ignores him, does what she wants. I mean, that's weak already, isn't it? Well, I would say that he obviously hasn't got the people skills to be able to manage her properly. Is because she unmanageable? She no, she's not unmanageable. But he he's so out of touch with where her politics is, uh, because he's so liberal and weak that um this is where the problem arises. Okay, Jackie, thanks for your perspective. Bob's in London, O three four 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 nine nine one thousand is the number he's called. Um, Bob, thanks for your call. What would you like to say? There's a couple of things I'd like to say. Um yeah, I agree with what um, Braverman said. Um, I think, basically, there's problems here. Um, why the, the um, Prime Minister has um, now got himself in this thing, I think probably, uh, I don't know. It's a lot to do with the civil service. Um, I think they're beyond control. The police chief of London, I've got a member of the family working in the police, and I've worked with the police forces all over the world. And basically, I don't think it's fit for purpose. You don't think the Metropolitan Police is fit for purpose, Bob? Well, you, you, you live in London, so you know about the Metropolitan Police. What is it about them that you're not happy with? Well, they're, they're woke. Um, I complained a month or so ago, and I saw Sadiq Khan on the telly a little while ago with his comments about, oh, um, brave ones inciting this, and, and that's what he's trying to say. And a month or so ago, his propaganda machine put a big thing. It was in the news statements, it was in the Sunday papers. White families are not true Londoners. I'm nearly 80. I've been a Londoner all my life. And I complain to the police. I'm not a racist. I've worked for the Jewish community. I'm not Jewish. I've worked for the people all over the world. And basically, I know um, people like Hamas, they let donations from charities, Islamic charities. I got involved in a job in Chicago where they were sending the money across by courier to the Middle East to fund Hamas and Hezbollah. There's absolutely no doubt, Luckily, that, there's absolutely no doubt that, has, that has happened. And the Charity Commission needs to do a heck of a lot more than they're already doing about that. Well, they're not doing anything, are they? And a, lot, a lot like the banks. Um, and I'm, a, I'm an expert. I've written books on money laundering, on election on money laundering, so police, everybody. And also on a fraud investigation. As I said, I work with police forces all over the world. This basically, they're not doing their job there. We, I don't mind these people walking down London on Saturday. Well, I don't think they should do on Saturday. I had an uncle of mine died in a Lancaster bomber should, over should, Poland during the war. I'm so sorry to hear that, uh, Bob, and, and I agree with you. I think they should just give it a rest on Saturday. Yeah, but what's happened today? Uh, I've seen on the news flash. These um, Palestinian protesters have, have climbed in into the Scottish Parliament, and there's there's three lots going on on Saturday. You've got this lot marching down from High Park Corner to Vauxhall Bridge. You've got the Stop All mob, the idiots, and then of course in. In the city of London, you've got the Lord Mayor's Parade. Yeah, the, How the police going to cope? Well, they're going to be very, very stretched, Bob, and you make a lot of uh, very, very decent points. Gary is in Manchester. Gary, uh, you're very welcome to the programme. What would you like to say? Oh. Hi, Gary. I, uh, I knew that girl from uh, Manchester was on before. We have never met her, but she's a big city fan. 
Oh, right, Jackie. Yeah, yeah, she's great. Um, yeah. do you, I think you want to talk about Sadiq Khan. Yeah, well, what, listen, I've been in race for a long while, like a lot of British people. The silent majority, which we are the silent majority. And she was right, what she said, Jackie. We've been silenced. Any of us that say anything, we're all right winged. Well, let's just remind ourselves, Gary, stay on the line. I just want to remind ourselves one more time about what Sadiq Khan said on Times Radio earlier. I just want to play that clip again, and I'll get Gary's reaction to it. So, Gary, just listen to this and then tell me what you think about it. Let's play the clip. The two things that worry me now is, one, I think you'll see much bigger numbers uh, of in, you know, pro-Palestinians coming on Saturday because of the Home Secretary's uh, uh, noise over the last few days. But second, we also now know, and this is the really worrying thing, uh, that there's going to be uh, the English Defence League and others from the far right turning up on Saturday on Armistice uh, Day. They say, because they want to, in inverted commas, protect the Senate half, uh, and that's generated because of what the Home Secretary has been saying, but also we're worried because they do encourage hatred uh, and anti-Islamic sentiment, and so we are concerned uh, about those things happening on Saturday, and they're happening as a direct consequence of the Home Secretary and the Prime Minister. Gary, what do you make of what Sadiq Khan said there? Listen, what he's been saying, he, what he's virtually saying is, anybody dares stand against them. It doesn't matter if we're, 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 the, we're the decentest, most tolerant British person in the country. If we stand up against him, then we're far right and racist. And we're sick of that label. We're sick of being called all these things. We're sick of being... And, and, and it's not true. It's not true, it's Gary. It's not true. They've got the ethnic... Minorities in this country thinking it's a damn racist country, yet they're all clamoring to. I don't, I don't, I don't think they all do, though. I think there are many, many people who realise that this is an open, an open and tolerant country, Gary. We're just going to have to leave it there, but thank you for your thoughts on that.